conference. It's Miss Dom. Today we're going to do something a little bit different in art. Something that might be hard to understand, but it's a very important part of contemporary art. Contemporary art is art that's being made today by artists. Many of them are making contemporary art right now as you're watching this. And there's probably some contemporary art in the galleries that you visit. Um, in the museums, you have a lot of art that is contemporary, but also historical art that was made long ago. So for example, at the North Carolina Museum of Art, you have some really ancient art. You have art that was made 200 years ago, 100 years ago, 50 years ago, and then contemporary art that might have been made just a few years ago um, and then purchased by the museum and the artist that made it is still living and working and making art today. Conceptual art is art where the most important thing about the art is the idea rather than the actual art object itself. Some conceptual artists are sort of pranksters. If you look at the banana image, that artist's is, name is Maurizio Catalan, um, and he is sort of known as a prankster in the art world. But people take his pranks very seriously. I'm going to talk more about that one in just a few minutes. The one underneath it is um, by Saul Lewitt. And Saul Lewitt actually recently passed away, uh, but his artwork can, is still being created because rather than selling the art as an object, he made very detailed instructions and anybody can create his art using those instructions. So he sold what was known as a certificate of authenticity so that only somebody that has that certificate can create the art installations and that's what makes it conceptual art. He was selling the idea and the instructions of how to do it rather than an actual painting. So how does conceptual art work? Imagine if I took off my glasses and set them down on the floor of an art museum. Would that then, with those glasses, stop being something functional that I wear and become art? Maybe. Somebody actually did that as an experiment to see how people in a museum would react to seeing the glasses on the floor. And just as they suspected, people reacted to the glasses as if they were an exhibit at the museum. People started looking at them and taking pictures of them because people that go to museums are aware of the idea of conceptual art. And so because the glasses were presented in a museum rather than being worn on somebody's face, people assumed that they were an art exhibit. So conceptual art is definitely the kind of art an artist who is a prankster would get excited about. And so that's how that banana on the wall with the duct tape got lots and lots of attention at a very important art uh, gallery exhibit where people from all over the world went to buy art from you know the latest and the greatest. And the person who did that was not an unknown artist. So if you or I duct tape a banana or any other piece of fruit or object to the wall and tried to sell it, most people would probably just laugh at you. Um, but this particular artist, he was also the artist a few years ago that became very famous for creating a golden toilet uh, as an object of art. And so that created a huge splash in the art scene about 10 years ago and it was exhibited in different galleries until somebody stole the golden toilet. Because gold, of course, is worth a lot of money. So it was 
thieves figured if they could get a hold of it, they could melt it down and nobody would know it was the golden toilet, I guess. Or maybe some extremely rich thief is using the golden toilet today as we speak. I really don't know what happened to the golden toilet, but I digress. Back to the banana. So, how much do you think that banana sold for at that art exhibit? And do you think anybody bought it? Remember, this is a banana taped to the wall. Okay, and then beyond that, to make matters even more scandalous, another artist who was a performance artist took that banana off the wall and ate it, and he called his performance Hungry Artist. This all actually happened just last year in Los Angeles. Well, the artist who took the banana off the wall and ate it was asked to leave, but he didn't really get in trouble because what the artist uh, Catalan was doing was selling the idea of the banana on the wall. So he just put a new banana up there and people did buy it. Three people bought the certificate of authenticity uh, that they could tape a banana to the wall of their art museum or gallery uh, for $120,000. And then he had one more, it was supposed to be a limited edition of four certificates. So when he was down to one, he jacked up the price to $150,000. And sure enough, somebody bought that one. So then, realizing he had a cash cow, he, he made two more artist proof certificates of authenticity, which normally if you're a printmaker, you would make an artist proof as sort of a special extra copy for yourself or for a friend, um, sort of a, Pre prequel kind of thing. Anyway, he sold two more for $150,000 each. And so he made a lot of money off of his idea of a banana being taped to the wall. And so my challenge to you is, do you have an idea that you would consider to be a work of art? Now, I don't want you to tape something to a wall. That's already been done. What makes conceptual art, art is that it's sort of not an, a novelty. For example, the artist Banksy, who is known for graffiti style art and being incognito, he goes and creates his art in public spaces when nobody's looking and nobody sees him do it. Um, and he's become extremely famous for it. He's from England. Uh, one of his, he, he makes stencils and sort of spray paints them, but he, he put one of his works in a frame and took it to an auction. And as it was being sold at auction, it self-destructed. He had secretly put a paper shredder inside the frame and as it was being sold, a little device triggered it to go down and get shredded um, as it was being sold. And so that was another conceptual piece. Uh, the idea that the art would be destroyed as it's being sold. Now that's a little more complicated than taping a banana to a wall because he had to, you know, nobody knew that it was gonna self-destruct and he had to construct this device uh, to make it self-destruct and then be watching the auction so he would know just the right moment to trigger it to self-destruct. So conceptual art can be sort of complicated like the Banksy stunt. Um, it could be very precise and detailed like the Sol Lewitt paintings that fill an entire room and have very specific detailed instructions about how they will be made. And you can watch a video about that on the right hand side. Uh, or that can be fairly simple. Just a really simple idea where you're taking an ordinary object like your pair of glasses and then by putting them in a place where a person would normally see art, uh, calling it art, 
and people looking at it as art. Which is kind of how that banana taped to the wall became art. So, what ideas are in your mind? What works of art can you create just in your mind that's an idea that maybe you could actually do or maybe it's too complicated for you to do, but it's a really good idea. Hmm. Think about it. I'm not going to give you any demonstrations or tell you how to do it because all you're really doing is thinking. And if you're able to execute it, in other words, put your idea out there for others to see, I'd love to see it. If it's something that's too complicated for you to actually do, maybe you could make that certificate of authenticity that describes that work of art that's in your brain and how somebody else could make it. I hope you learned something today. And if you have a great idea, make it, take a picture of it. Because a lot of times, the um, conceptual art is temporary, it might involve food or dirt or something that you find outside or anywhere. You just put it somewhere and it might get swept up at some point. <laughs> uh, so take a picture of it if it's temporary or make your certificate of authenticity. And I hope you come up with lots of good ideas. That's your art lesson for today, and I'll see you next time. Bye.